Hi there, and welcome to Sense 7 Core. Today, we'll be reviewing the Materials Requirements Planning, or MRP, module. One of the key principles in business is supply and demand. In Sense 7, we use MRP to help us better understand and plan for our demand, sales orders, and how we plan to supply the products for those sales orders, whether it's through purchase orders, through production, such as assemblies or production orders, or our inventory, such as our stock on hand or transfer orders. Let's get started by looking at how we plan to supply the products for our sales orders by looking at our supply rules. These are created in our settings, reference books, stock, and locations and bins. Here we have a list of all of our locations, and I'm going to focus on this one today. And let's take a look at our supply rules. We have one rule that is active and one that is not. The active rule allows us to focus either on all products or a select few products. We can also select how these rules apply or select the individual product, such as liquor. From there, we can start to plan what happens if we happen to be out of stock of that product. We can either produce the product on our shop floor, as long as we have 20% production capacity, or if that's not available, we can transfer the product from one location to another until our stock level is met or other options to fulfill the total demand quantity or just partial demand quantity. If none of those fit, we can also select to purchase the product from a supplier with the lowest lead time, or maybe you want the lowest price or the latest supplier that you used for those products. Now let's talk about how often those transfers will take place. In transfer planning, we can see that these transfers happen on specific days of the week. It looks like every other day, and it only happens for this demand location. The other option is to set it up at intervals. So it's for this location, but maybe it's every 14 days with a particular start date. Now that we have our settings complete, let's go ahead and run our MRP and interpret the results. We navigate to MRP from our inventory and MRP. Please note that you cannot start a new MRP until your latest one is completed. Here, everything's completed so we can create a new MRP. You can either go through and select all of the settings that work best for you, or you can create a template that pre-fills out the settings for you. I would encourage you to load the demand details if you think you might have questions and want to drill down through the data to see where the demands are coming from. I'm also selecting a short planning period because I want this MRP to run rather quickly and only a few locations. However, you can select all locations and a much longer planning period for your purposes. Now that all of my settings are complete, I'm going to go ahead and run my MRP. And fantastic, my MRP has run. However, let's narrow down this list so it's a little bit more manageable. Let's say I only wanna look at my liquor products. From here, I can see the demand from the different locations for different products with the name liquor in it. Everything that you see that's in a different color, in this case, teal, are hyperlinks so that you can dig further into the information. So here I can see for this location and this product, I have an independent demand of 1810. If I look further down, I can see what is creating that independent demand. I've got my sales orders and my stock level for my independent demand. However, I only have a supply of 387. And this is due to transfer orders and stock on hand. 
That means that the system has calculated that I need to come up with an additional 1,423 of this product. So let's see how the system suggests that we do this. We can navigate up to our suggested supply orders. And here it's suggesting that we produce some of our product based on our supply rules and transfer some of our product from one location to another. We can select to create these orders by confirming. You'll now notice that production orders and transfer orders have been created. Let's move on to the results. The results stay and show you the supply task, the transfer order and the production order that was created, what the status is of those orders, and it gives you the ability to void those orders if you selected them by mistake. Errors could include things such as products not having a supplier set up on the product level. And finally, there's the activity log. Here I can see when the MRP run was started, when it was completed, and what actions were taken from the MRP. Once done, you can complete your MRP and confirm. Now you can continue your business processes, such as completing those transfer orders and production orders to meet your demand. I hope this was a helpful review of our MRP. If you have any questions, please let us know. Have a wonderful day.